Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Jerry Janda. I'm with the Community and Influencers team. I am focusing on the Influencers program for that team. That includes the SAP mentors and the SAP champions. And I'm very happy to have Morale, who is an SAP champion, here with us today. He's also a colleague at SAP. He's going to be doing a virtual tour around uh, how to stay relevant and up to date with SAP extension and integration suite. Uh, since we are a small group at the moment, um, Morali has told me prior to the call that if anyone has any questions, you're more than welcome to come off mute. I will also be keeping an eye on the written chat. So if you don't want to come off mute, if you'd rather just type a question, that's totally fine as well. And I can read out your question for you if you'd like. So on that note, um, Morali also told me this call will take about 30 or 40 minutes or so. Uh, I'm sorry, the presentation portion of it will take 30 or 40 minutes or so. So that also leaves us plenty of time at the end for Q&A and conversation. So I'll now hand things over to Morali and thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. Thank you for the introduction, Jerry, and a warm welcome to everyone. So today I'm going to be sharing a bit of an update to the developer community in terms of how you can keep up to the pace with all the changes that are happening in the cloud platform topic. Now, in, in my day-to-day -day, uh, day -day work, I, I do get to interact with a lot of developers and architects in customer as well as partner ecosystem. And I've seen majority of them already starting to make a transition from the on-prem skills to the cloud skills. But the most common question that I get from them is, how, how do I make sure that I stay up to date and get relevant for the topic that I'm after? Because there's so much of information out there they keep, uh, the, the, the topics keep changing, the names keep changing, and it, sometimes it's hard to keep up to the pace. So I just wanted to share today, you know, what are the things that you need to be aware of and the things that you need to be following in terms of being up to date. So just a little bit of introduction about me. So I'm here based in Sydney, Australia, and I work for SAP Australia. I'm part of the solution advisory team, and my day-to-day -day job is is about you know, going out there to customers, helping them to understand um, what their key challenges are and how they can solve that using cloud technologies. So that's something that I'm passionate about and been working uh, on, 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 the cloud, on the cloud platform topics for the last four or five years. Particularly on the uh, influencer programs, I've been part of many of these influencer programs. I was part of the SAP mentors, um, then moved on to the SAP technology ambassadors, and now I'm a proud SAP champion. Uh, anytime there is an opportunity to engage with the community, I'm, I always put my hands up to try and share knowledge and, and, and use it as an opportunity to get to know people and also at the same time see if there's anything for me to learn in that. So you will see me very active on SAP community as well as if you're in Australia, you will also see me um, being able to uh, support in some of the activities that is done by the user group. So in the title, you would have noticed that there is um, a mention to SAP Extension Suite and SAP Integration Suite. This is a new term, and for, again, I would say for most of you all out there, a few weeks ago, SAP uh, had a major uh, rebranding exercise on the cloud platform, and many of you would be aware of what happened. So essentially, SAP have, has dropped the cloud platform brand and taken all the capabilities and services in, which are in SAP Cloud Platform and, and grouped it together into an ex extension suite and an SAP integration suite and rolled it up into the SAP Business Technology Platform. The Business Technology Platform has been there for almost two years and, and it was kind of a causing confusion with, with, uh, with customers and partners as to why there are two platforms and when to use which, which platform. Uh, hence the reason behind all the rebranding exercise. In the, in the picture at the bottom, what you get to see is in SAP Business Technology Platform is categorized into four um, mar market categories. So you see uh, database and data management, analytics, application development integration, and intelligent technology. Predominantly cloud platform falls under the application development and integration category where you would see the use of cloud platform services for extension and integration. And that's why you see the extension suite and integration suite part of the application development and integration. But one thing to keep in mind is this business technology platform is, um, is a unified platform, which is, which is aimed to help customers in their intelligent enterprise journey. 
you probably would be, uh, some of you in the call might be new to the, to the database and data management and the analytics part, you know, which is more focused towards the data to value use cases, which, which SAP aims to help customers with in that journey. So there are different scenarios and use cases for the business technology platform. But today we're just going to focus on the application development and integration topic. So a bit of introduction before we get to uh, jump on the SAP community platform. I just wanted to spend a few minutes to help you understand what is the SAP extension suite. You know, as the name suggests, you know, it is it is a, a vehicle to extend your existing SAP solutions, whether they are on-premise or in the cloud, extension suite helps to extend those solutions. And you can see on the extreme right and the left-hand side too, so you have SAP and third party. So there's nothing stopping you from using the SAP extension suite to also extend third party applications. Now, predominantly when uh, in the past, when there was a need from a business user, if they want access to some reports or transactions, the, the go-to option would be, you know, you open up SE 11, create a table, go to SE 38, create a report, give access to that partic uh, particular report for the business user. We've changed the way in which we do extensions. Uh, you know, for, this has been there for now almost a couple of years ago. We no longer have been recommending customers and partners to do extensions within your core systems. Whichever system you take, whether it is an SAP S4 HANA or a cloud solution like SuccessFactor, you will see there is an in-app extension capability within these solutions. These, um, these capabilities would be good enough to help you be able to adjust the screens or be able to add a field to an existing database table or even alter the business logic you know, using baddies and other mechanisms. But the moment you won't have to do things beyond it, for example, if you want to be able to modernize the user experience, you want to be able to expose your business processes for your uh, B2B or B2C scenarios. Maybe you want a supplier portal that you want to expose to your suppliers. Or if you want to mobilize a business process, which is there in any of your SAP systems. Or it could be even where you want to set up a data mart to be able to get insights from data that's coming from multiple systems. Or even get into some of the new technologies around machine learning or IoT services and be able to leverage the capabilities of those things along with the business processes that's sitting in your core systems, that's where the extension suite comes into play. Now to keep it very simple, we've categorized this into three categories. So you see the digital experience, which is more around providing a rich user experience, whether it is to create a central Fury launchpad on the, on the cloud, or whether it is to mobilize a particular business process or to you know, create a chatbot using SAP Conversational AI. So there are a range of services that can help in enhancing the ex user experience. In the middle, what you see is a digital process automation. These are services that help in automating business processes. It could be either um, intelligent RPA or a workflow management, which can help in orchestrating processes across different solutions, whether they are on-prem or cloud, whether they are SAP or a third-party system, the workflow management helps in achieving those scenarios. And the last one is the development efficiency, more targeted towards developers. How can, how can the platform help developers to be able to accelerate the, the, the time to build their extension applications? Again, this is where there are a lot of tools that are provided, tools that can help in providing templates to easily connect to SAP systems and quickly build applications or tools around the DevOps services, which helps, uh, helps making the process much more efficient and so on. So there are plenty of different services that you can see here, which are all categorized under the extension suite. Now, traditionally, when you've been making changes um, or extensions in, you know, within your core systems, you, know, you, you would be tied down to the change control process. Most of your uh, organizations have a very rigid uh, change management process. In some cases I've seen where customers only allow production changes to come in once in every three months. So with the, with the pace of change that's happening, you know, sometimes it's just not possible for businesses to wait for that long for them to roll out new functionalities or capability to business users. This is again, something where the extension, extension suite helps in bringing that agility to your business to be able to quickly create applications connecting to APIs that are in your SAP or non-SAP solutions and rolling them out much quickly to your end users. 
you know, with the extension suite, we are talking about weeks, weeks to create your mobile application or your uh, you know, theory based applications. It should be much faster as compared to building your applications in an on prem world. The next category is the integration suite. And integration suite, in, is, again, if you look at the cloud integration, that's been there for many years. Now, it's probably one of the most mature uh, services on the cloud on the cloud platform. And, and this has matured over the last few years and the, the whole integration suite offers a comprehensive um, suite of capabilities to address all integration needs, whether it is process integration or data integration or event-based integration, there is a capability in the platform that can help you achieve that. You don't have to go around looking for another tool to be able to achieve that sort of an integration. Everything is within the same integration suite. Now at the top, what you see is the cloud integration, which I you know, mentioned earlier is one of the most mature services out there, which is primarily for uh, process integration. And, and, we pro and SAP provides a lot of content, standard contents to integrate solutions. It, I mean, we started off the journey with SAP to SAP solutions, but then this is also branched out to SAP to non-SAP solutions. So as of today, when you go onto the API Business Hub, you will be able to see plenty of integration contents that have been delivered and maintained by SAP for orchestrating those processes between SAP and non-SAP applications. The integration advisor, it's again a key capability, especially specifically around the you know, B2B scenarios helps in accelerating the time you take to build these integration scenarios. It helps in creating those integration artifacts based on the crowdsourcing methodology. At the bottom, you see there is API management. And API management also becoming more and more important these days as organizations want to have one single layer one single layer for anyone to access all the APIs, whether it is an SAP system or a non-SAP system, they want a central place to manage all their APIs and secure them, be it uh, throttling or uh, being able to restrict the number of calls that are being made in a certain amount of time. You have full flexibility to do all those things in API management. We've also seen examples where some businesses were able to monetize the data they had by using API management too. Data intelligence is all about data integration. It helps in doing all those ETL processes when you're dealing with large sets of data and, and moving them from one system to another system. And it's not, not also just about moving the data across different systems. It could be also about how to get real-time insights into your data that is sitting in your core systems by applying some machine learning models and being able to visualize that on top of visual tools like you know, SAP Analytics Cloud. Open Connectors is probably another key service within the integration suite. As most of you know, when you, you, know, when you start a process in an SAP system, it's likely that it will end in a non-SAP system. So this is where the Open Connectors brings in the rich capability around third-party connectivity. You know, there, are, there are plenty of uh, connectors for non-SAP systems, which can be used along with different capabilities that you see in the integration suite. To be, to be able to orchestrate that process end-to-end -end between SAP and non-SAP solutions. And at the bottom, you also see enterprise messaging. So this is all about helping you um, go about with the e uh, event-driven architectures. You, know, you have events that have been um, sent from your S4 HANA system or your success factor system, and you want uh, downstream systems to be able to listen to it and be able to respond to the changes that are happening. Enterprise messaging is, is, is a go-to option for that. And at the bottom, you would also see there are lots of other tools that are there, which are all for on-prem needs. So process orchestration or the data hub, these are all still relevant when it comes, when you, when you talk about a hybrid integration pattern where you have data sitting um, you know, or processes that are in an, in an on-prem system and you want to be able to connect and consume them with cloud-based solutions. This is where the hybrid integration you know, comes into play along with the integration suite. So that gives you a bit of an overview as to, in a nutshell, what are the different capabilities in you know, extension suite and integration suite. Oh, Morali, excuse me, excuse me one second. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to let you know, we did have a couple more people join the call while you were speaking. And for the benefit of those people, I just wanna let you know, since we are a small group here and this is a virtual tour, it's more of an informal type 
call. If you do have questions as he's speaking, feel free to come off mute if you'd like to ask questions. Um, you're also more than welcome to ask some questions in chat. I am monitoring that on a separate monitor over here. So um, I just wanted to give everybody that option before uh, we continued. So Morali, uh, thanks for that. I just wanted to let everybody know. No, thanks for that, Jerry. So I'm going to be spending much of my time, uh, you know, from. Hey, uh, hi, this is Hanu here. I have a quick question on the previous slide. Yes, Hanu, go ahead. Can you? Yeah. So, um, in this diagram, so what is the difference between API Hub versus um, the other tools we have? So, all are we talking? Are we calling all the other? Uh, Cloud kind of cloud integration and those things as calling it as API Hub or what does it exactly mean? So API Hub is just one central repository where you can go and find APIs that are exposed from different systems, uh, as well as integration contents that are available. Integration contents which are uh, you know there in cloud integration, in API management, you can get to explore them. So you can think of API Business Hub as an you know, as an you know, external facing site where you can go and explore all these standard offerings that SAP provides. Whereas all these things that you see at the bottom are services which uh, you know, customers would subscribe to for a particular uh, requirement that they have. Does it answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just uh, thought like, you know, it's, it's all grouped under one bucket, right? So I thought like it's all the same, but yeah. But... No, it's different. So I mean, API management, uh, sorry, API Business Hub is all about, it, it's publicly facing site which you can go and explore. If you want to know what are all the APIs that are there in success factors, you can then explore that and get your developers to go and interact with the sandbox system and get to know how some processes work. Or if you want to also see how, um, you know, there are business contents that are provided by different, um, uh, for, for different scenarios, Again, you can go and explore the contents. If you are trying to integrate S4 HANA with a, with a commerce cloud solution, then you can dive deep into, into these details here and see how the integration flow is being created. You can see it in a read-only fashion, but once you are using the actual services, like for example, cloud integration, you can import these things to your namespace, maybe even adjust them, connect them to your system and start using them. Yeah, perfect. So, you know, uh, the, the cloud connector and then the cloud integration. So what these two things, can you also shed some light on those ones? Sure. So the, the basic understanding is cloud connector is there, then you are able to connect between on-prem to, um, to SAP cloud platform and other scenarios that can expand on those. That's right. So cloud Connector is all it does is it sets up a secure tunnel. So it's a software that you install on your premise and will set up a secure tunnel to be able to consume APIs from your on-prem systems. Once this tunnel is established, then you know, within the business technology platform, you will be able to go in. Maybe if you have an API management or a Fiori app that you want to put, you can then start consuming those APIs that way. Whereas cloud integration is more about process integration, where you want to orchestrate processes between two solutions. Uh, if you go into SuccessFactor and you create a, or you complete a learning course, you want to be able to update the data into an SAP system, which is the HCM system, which is sitting on-prem. So there are standard content that are delivered and cloud platform integration will help achieve those scenarios. I hope that answered oh, you. Yeah, got it, got it. Thank you. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly... Um, just, I'll, I'll, I just want to quickly add uh, also for everyone's benefit, a replay of this call will be posted along with this presentation, which will include links that you might find helpful. So, um, you know, if we don't get to everyone's questions or you need a refresher after the fact, uh, we definitely will make a lot of this material available. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Sure thing. So I wanted to just, uh, just spend a few minutes here on the Cloud Platform webpage. So, you know, some of you would be familiar with the Cloud Platform webpage. So this has been updated with the recent rebranding that has happened. So you can get to see um, you know, all the details out here, especially in FAQ in terms of what this rebranding is all about. Does it affect existing customers and so on? So it's a very good place to read those FAQs and understand. And if you're also trying to understand what is the name of these new services, you get to see a list of all the name changes happening here. 
for example, if you if you used uh, a service called SAP Cloud Platform Mobile Service that is, that is changed or rebranded to SAP Mobile Service. So you will get to see all those mappings of those old names with new names in this particular document. So all those things are available within this particular website. Now I'm gonna quickly move on to the community page. So again, this is the Cloud Platform community page and you can see it's renamed to SAP Integration Suite and Extension Suite. All the featured contents will be uh, you know, displayed right at, here at, at this particular page. So anything that is important that, we, that, um, that the owners of this particular topic think needs to be shared with the community, they will keep updating this. So you can bookmark this and, and you can go through all these different updates. There's also a link at the bottom to jump to all the blog posts and questions. Now, just have to bear in mind that extension suite, integration suite is a very broad topic. So probably if you are an architect, you probably want to be up to date on what's happening in, in different aspects and, and services of these platforms. But if you are a developer who is just focusing on Fiori applications, then there are other ways, uh, which I will show you later, how you can stay up to date. But this is more from somebody who wants to have that broad knowledge, but not really in depth in everything. You can actually subscribe to, um, you know, to, the, to the blog posts out here and, and keep going through these updates. Another key nuggets I would say are all these resources on the right-hand side. Plenty of resources, which is what I will actually go through uh, in, in the session. So you will get to see um, you know, open SAP courses, which are relevant for these topics. SAP Discovery Center, where you can go and have a look at all the different services, or if you, after um, all the tech ed replays, which has all been open to the uh, community, you can go and look at that from here. Or if you want to understand um, what's the status of all the uh, data centers, or what, what's new in, 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 in each of these extension suite and integration suite, you get to see all the different links out here. Right? There's an option here to give uh, feedback, and as part of the influence program, if you think there's something that could be much better, you can put a feedback in here or the links to subscribe for podcasts. So this is what I'm going to uh, you know, go through and just walk through one by one and just to show you what is the capabilities out here. So let me start uh, with the discovery center. Quite often when uh, you're starting a project, you, know, you want to know first what capabilities are there in, in, in the business technology platform. So the service catalog in the discovery center is a good place. Like for example, if you're just building an app and you want, you have a requirement to store some images of some pictures that are taken in, uh, you know, within your application. So you want to know if there is a capability to store pictures uh, on this particular platform. You can then go into the, into the service catalog and start exploring to see if there are services. Because as and when new services are added, you will get to see them out here. Now, for example, let me go to the extension suite in digital process automation category. This should then filter down all the different services that are relevant for this category. And I can take workflow management as an example. And this would give me all the details pertaining to this particular service. You know, the link help document links to all the different components. You also see there are standard contents that are provided for workflow management, you know, whether it is, um, to speed up purchase request and approval and release within SAP ECC system, you can use these integration contents on the business technology platform to speed up those scenarios. Or if you're looking at any tutorials um, and, and also link to a community SAP community page, you get all the information out here. So one-stop place where you can go and see all the data. If you're looking at pricing details, you know what are the prerequisite services and What's, uh, what's like the price that's involved for these things, you can go and have a look at it and, 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 and be able to add it to your estimated tool. Most important one is the missions here. There are missions that are, that are being created that helps different um, you know, customers to be able to articulate those scenarios. So just as an example, if you see here, um, document-centric approval is a very common thing where you have a document and you want to send it for approval and usually manual. There is a standard content that has been provided in the workflow management that helps you achieve those things. So you can actually start a mission and then you can, um, you can get somebody as a coach to be assigned who will help you in the journey to pointing you in the right direction. 
just, just making clear. So this is not like an implementation service. It's more a guidance, someone that will be there to help you as to what are the steps that you need to follow in order to be able to get the scenario done. You will get to see all these different you know, project boards. And if you want to be able to uh, you know, follow any of them, you can, you can drill down into each of these, um, each of these tasks and see what information. Some of them will refer you to a GitHub repository. Some of them will refer you to a tutorial to use to be able to complete that particular task. So you can just start the mission from here and you can continue. The next one that I wanted to share is um, now, um, now that you've seen the different services and capabilities that are out there, how do you stay up to date? Right? Um, there, are, um, there, 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 there are different um, capabilities in the business technology platform. There is no fixed cycle as to when you will see uh, updates being pushed. So you will have to bookmark this page and, and be able to keep a check on what are the new things that are happening out here. Like on February 25th, the cloud cockpit was renamed to you know, business technology platform cockpit. Or if you go further down, you will see um, just uh, one day before February 25th, there was again an update that was pushed, which was more around identity authentication service. So this is a good place to you know, bookmark and, and keep going and to see if you're, if you're focusing on workflow management or integration, then filter this page based on that service or component and and, and then go through all the updates so that you're um, so that you're uh, you can be relevant and be able to understand all those new changes that have been deployed. The next one that I wanted to share is the site status and the trust center. These are these two services are um, help you in understanding what's the what's the current health of all the data center and the services that you're using to um, to execute some scenarios. Now you can actually subscribe to updates here. This will keep sending you email whenever something goes wrong. So this morning there was uh, an issue with the, uh, with, the uh, with the BTP cockpit in, in several regions. So I, I straight away got an update here, but you can see the status of each of these services out here. Now to just show you how this looks like, if I just open my email, you will be able to see here, um, how you get emails from all the subscriptions that you've done. So I just got an email this morning saying there was a disruption and these are the different components and regions that were affected. So you will get emails and whenever, uh, whenever there is some disruption to service so that you are up to date and you're, and you're across what's happening. So if some application stops working, so it, rather than trying to debug it, the first thing you do is go here, go into this trust center and site report and see first if the, if the data center and the services are performing uh, all right, and then you can take your next action. So the trust center also gives you indication as to how your services in business technology platform are performing. Like for example, if I take um, you know, API management in integration suite, this also gives me an indication as to how this is going and if at all there are any disruptions, this will give me an indication to that. And another important one that I also wanted to share on the services is, is the service description guide. It's something that I bookmark and I encourage um, you know, customers and partners to use a lot. So this will give you all the service description guide uh, for all the services that are there uh, out there in, in the business technology platform. Like for example, if you're going to use a mobile service or an integration service, you might want to know what is the metrics behind this. Is, is, is the consumption based on number of users or is it based on the gigabytes that has been transferred and so on. So you will get to see all the different um, information of individual services out here, which is something uh, you know, which is good for, for, for you to bookmark and then refer to. You know, when you're getting onto a new service, you probably want to know more about the metrics behind it so that your consumptions can be utilized accordingly. Um, excuse me, Morali. While you were speaking, I did get a message from someone, and I want to make sure that I gave him the right information. All the bookmarks that you're currently showing, they are in your your deck at the end, correct? Correct. That's right. Okay. So good. I gave him the right information. <laughs> so yeah, I, as I was saying, uh, we'll we'll make the deck available. We'll make the replay available, and I'll um, at the end of the call, I'll put a link in the chat that'll let you know where you can find all this information, like within the next day or two. Thanks, Morali. Most of 
the links, you will find them here. Like you get the site status report here, whereas the Cloud Trust Center was is, is not yet updated out here. So I actually bookmarked it. So I will share all the links that are relevant in as a, as a slide, and you can then use that too. Great. So I've just in the last few minutes, I just talked about how you can explore and find different services and try to understand what each service does and what the capability is. The next part is about how do you get enabled? You've identified few services and now you say, like, okay, you know, I specialize in workflow, you know, in on-prem on solutions. And now I want to jump into the cloud and I want to start being able to go and orchestrate workflow processes across cloud solutions. So this is where you need to start looking at some of the enablement option. Now, again, I've bookmarked all of these things. A good place to start would be the open SAP course. I just opened this already out here. So open SAP course is again a very good place to get enabled. You know, it's some of them are are um, old courses which are open in a self-paced manner. So you can actually go and view them and, and, and enable yourself at your own pace. But there are some interesting courses that are going on, especially for architects. You have an enterprise architect view for uh, this technology platform. There's also an upcoming open SAP course, particularly on DevOps. So pretty good courses that are uh, lined up. Uh, in open SAP. But if you're just looking at some existing topics, like say, for example, if you just want to understand the extension suite that I talked about earlier, if you want to get into a course and understand the breadth of extension suite, there are courses that help in, in that. Or if you just want to go and build a mobile application using mobile services, you can then go into the respective course for that. There's also plenty of tutorials that are um, you know, made available. So you can go into the tutorial navigator and in the tutorial navigator, again, there are filters. So if you want to get enabled on a particular service, like a mobile service, then you can, you can filter those things and be able to find the right tutorial that you want. But I've just put a filter on business technology platform. So this will give me all the different tutorials that are available again. There's heaps of tutorials, some of them on Neo environments, some of them on Cloud Foundry environment. Uh, I, I believe the Neo environments have, are, are getting removed. But if you are not really sure where to find it, you know, don't hesitate to put a question on SAP community. Uh, I'll show you where you can go and, and, and put, your, uh, put your questions in. Someone out there will be able to help you find the right tutorials and get started with it. So, don't hesitate to go onto the SAP community and post something out there. Another important aspect is the, um, is the developer ecosystem out there. So SAP developers, you know, some of you guys might be familiar with them. Um, they've, they're always out there online um, trying to help the community to get up to date on what's happening in the developer space. Um, I would encourage you to subscribe to this channel and be able to go through these sessions. So if you, at the moment, there is a hands-on uh, you know, session that's going on, which helps in, you know, helps you in building applications using the cloud application programming model, or also using um, even, uh, or the enterprise messaging. So there are different topics that they pick every, um, every month. So stay tuned and, and subscribe to these, uh, subscribe to this particular channel, a, a very good way to get enabled. And lastly, I also talked about those TechEd, um, uh, TechEd links in the, in, in the community page. So as, as most of you would know, you know we had SAP TechEd, which, which just concluded was, sorry. So we just uh, you know, concluded in December was, you know, was free for um, you know, members to be able to register and access. So all the contents that you see are also made available here. So if I scroll further down, you will be able to see um, you know, there's a database and data management track, and there's also an application development integration track. So if you're looking at you know, the cloud platform topics, then you know, this is the place for you to go in to be able to see uh, all the development and integration related topics. Now, that's from an enablement point of view. Even if you are across all these things, sometimes you still need to be able to keep yourself um, connected in the community. And that's also another source to help you to be able to understand all the different updates and, and, and things that are happening. What are other members and other uh, members of the community or customers out there, what are they talking about? You know, it's very good to 
get to know the pulse if you're following some of these uh, Twitter handles. So I actually get majority of my updates from Twitter because I follow the right Twitter handles. And I also look at people who are active and who are contributing and I try to follow them. So that way I keep getting all the updates. So if um, the SAP CP or the SAP Cloud Platform Twitter handle has been renamed to SAP Application Development and Integration. So a good one to follow. You will get to know all the different uh, updates. So in this case, you can see there is a new tutorial for um, AI business services. So that's an, uh, an update that this Twitter handle has shared. You can actually subscribe to um, other handles too. So there's one for SAP community. There's also um, SAP uh, open, open SAP Twitter handle. So I generally um, go and follow all these uh, Twitter handles to try and keep myself up to date in terms of what are the things, uh, key, key activities that are happening in the community and how I can also participate and, and be across those things. So important. There's also product specific uh, Twitter handles. So some of the product teams, like if you see um, SAP mobile, they have their own Twitter handle. And if you also see um, portal, portal team, that is in charge of portal and launchpad service, they also have their own Twitter handle. So once you start following uh, some of these Twitter handles, you will get to know which ones um, are, are things that are relevant for you and where you get updates and you can actually start moving on from there. Another interesting uh, way to get updates um, is using the podcast. I really like this, especially when, you know, I'm, when I used to travel to work, I almost take about a, an hour for me to go to work. So and I'm sitting in my train doing nothing. I, I just listen to these podcasts. A good way to also be up to date on what's happening in the, in, in the ex extension and integration space. So you know, in January, there was a topic focused purely on the whole rebranding, what this means and why it was done. And uh, just a few days ago, we had one for the DevOps. You know, we had experts come in to talk about what are the DevOps um, capabilities that the platform offers and how our customers actually using it. So a very good place to go in and uh, subscribe to, especially when you wanna, um, when you wanna just listen to these podcasts uh, doing something else and you wanna get, uh, keep yourself up to date. I find this really helpful. I'm gonna jump back to um, SAP community page. So you would have noticed that, uh, you know, this is a page where um, you get all the different updates around integration extension suite, but sometimes you may want to start small. Say, um, you know, you are a Fiori developer who has been building Fiori apps on-prem and you want to start with doing Fiori applications in the cloud. So, um, you know, the, the primary uh, service for that is, um, is business application studio. So there is a topic for that particular service. So each of these services, uh, will have their own topic pages. So you could go in there and um, you know, go through all the you know, featured contents. Again, as previously, the resources are really the nuggets. You can see all the links here to the help documentation, or if you want to be able to subscribe to a newsletter where you get, again, regular updates from the business application studio team, you will be able to get those updates regularly on a monthly basis or if you want to influence the product and be able to provide suggestions, there are ways in which you could do that uh, through uh, these links here. And, in, and you'll be also able to go through this blog post and any questions that you want to do specifically related to Business Application Studio within the same page. Just as another example, let me also um, try and um, show another example of an integration so if I search for integration suite, this will give me um, the topic page for SAP integration suite. And just as before, you will again get to see all the key resources on the right-hand side. And there are additional ones out here. If you want to get into a mini enablement series with some demos, you know, the team has built something out here. Or if you are looking to just uh, listen to these black belt um, uh, series, which is like a webinar where you have some experts who, along with customers, come in and share their experience. You can subscribe to those uh, webinars. There is also these uh, monthly webinars that the team provides in terms of um, providing updates with what's new, you know, in in cloud platform integration. Right, there was one that concluded in the month of February, 
Um, they shared a lot of updates on what's new with the product. So again, another way of um, you know, being up to date, if you, if you know that you are focused on integration or uh, workflow, get onto these topic pages and start to subscribe to them and, and start leveraging all the different uh, enablements that's provided by the respective teams. And lastly, what I also wanted to just share with you is if at all you're getting stuck with any, any, any issues, you know, make sure that you go into uh, ask the question. And out here, the key thing that you have to remember is the tags. You, know, you put your title for your question and then you provide description as to what challenge you're having. And the tags is what is very important. So you need to make sure you put the right tag so that it goes to the relevant uh, topic and channel. And the people that are following these tags will be able to then respond and, and help you with those things. Like if, if for example, if you're having um, uh, an issue with say a mobile development kit and you're building a mobile app, there is a tag for that. Or if you are building um, a Fiori app with a central launch pad on the cloud platform or the business technology platform, you will be able to see there is um, SAP launch pad service. So use these tags so that the questions are directed to the right uh, topics and, and people who are following those things will be able to support you in that. And uh, I also encourage you to start uh, sharing any, uh, any things that you have learned you know, when you're experiencing um, uh, a particular or, or when you're facing a particular scenario and, and, and you want to be able to share that with the community in terms of how that has helped you. I would really encourage you to go into these blog posts and feel free to you know, put up a blog post sharing what your experience is. Even if it is something small, something new that you have learned, it might be completely uh, you know, new for someone else. So it will be still a good learning because there's plenty of content here. Sometimes finding the right content is the challenge. That's, that's the reason why you know, we request to put the right tags in there so that we can then group the contents and be able to be able to visualize and interact uh, and collaborate within each of these topics. So with that, I just going to move on to my last slide, just to, um, as a final thought, I just wanted to share with you. So, you know, this is my link to my community page. So what I would request is, you know, put a picture to yourself, put some information about what you do, what your area of expertise is and what you like to do and learn about and start following people who you think are contributing uh, uh, and, and are relevant to what you're doing and be able to collaborate and you know, engage with the community. You know, I think uh, it'll, be a good, it'll be a good start, especially when you're transitioning to the cloud and when you really need that support, there are people out there who have already been, part, uh, been through that journey and, and will be able to help you with their knowledge. So with that, I conclude, I wanna give the next uh, 10, 15 minutes for some question and answers. Yeah, and what I'll do then while we're waiting for those, I'm gonna just pop a link into the chat if you take a look at that, that's where in a day or two, there will be a replay. We'll, we'll take this video, we'll upload it to YouTube. Uh, Morali will make the presentation available to me. I'll include that as a link as well. So there you go. Um, if, for those of you wondering will there be linked to any of the bookmarks, yes, you can see that and you'll have access to this document if you pay a visit to that link in a, in a day or two. You can also follow Morali. He just shared his uh, profile page. I shared mine at the top of the call. Um, if you follow somebody and that person follows you back, then you can begin uh, doing uh, direct messaging with one another. So that's another great way. If you do have questions after the fact, you can follow up that way. But for now, since we are on the call, we can open it up to questions. You're welcome to come off mute if you have a question for Morali around this, or if you have any questions about the community in general, I'm happy to answer those as well. This is a virtual tour of the SAP community. So even though this one was very focused on a specific topic and how you can use the community and related resources to gather information, this is also an opportunity for you to ask general questions about the community as well, if you'd like to. Um, you can do that in chat if, as well, if you'd prefer not to come off of mute. So you have a few options if anyone has any questions. If not, we can perhaps wrap up the call unless anyone has a question or if you, I can uh, give the last, the last words to you, Morali, before I stop the recording. We'll just give everyone a second to see if anyone has anything to say. I'm also looking at the chat, doesn't look like anything's coming in.
Okay, good. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Thank you, Stephen. So would you just any closing comments, thoughts for us, Riley, before we go ahead and wrap the call then? Yeah, I would just would like to just remind the participants to start leveraging SAP community as a way to collaborate and you know, get knowledge. There are you know, experts out there who are always there, happy to help and you know, as a volunteer support with any issues that you guys have. So, so feel free to use the SAP community as a vehicle to, you know, to be able to network and, and, and collaborate with, with some experts. And at the same time, you know, use it as a platform to also share what you learn. You know, and, and, and that way, I think the community will also be able to gain a lot from that. Perfect. And on that note, I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you all. I'm glad to see that for those of you who joined, you enjoyed the session and got a lot out of it. Uh, as always, feel free to follow up with us if you have additional questions later on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Morali, for taking the time. This was great. So much information to digest here. I really do recommend people check out the replay and the presentation because I can imagine we all would need a refresher with so much uh, ground to cover here. So on that note, thank you all and have a wonderful day. Thank you.